Hello everybody, this is Westbound for Westbound Music. I'm gonna take you through my score for Goodbye Brother by the YouTube, uh, which we were recently prompted to score for in order to have a chance of winning um, Spitfire Audio's uh, Albion Colossus. I didn't win, but somebody else did. Congrats to Oswald. And thanks to Spitfire Audio, thanks to QTube for providing us with all this great material. This is a clip that Archie Jennings put together. Kudos and shout out to Archie, really well done, great job. And I'm gonna um, do this walkthrough mostly to show you Orchestral Essentials and 1 and 2 in action, which I found really um, apropos for this kind of horror clip. Okay, so without too much babbling, hopefully let's go into it. I need to mention Martin Heidenreich's tutorial about beat mapping and setting the cues and all that. He he did a much better job than I could. Mm. This is something very uh, crucial and uh, essential that you need to get your you know, good feel for, you know, like setting cues, creating markers and mapping them to the cue with the beat and all that. So, mm. but I'm gonna show you my tempo map here in the arrangement picture. So here we go. This is what I'm talking about here, the arrangement section. We have um, markers, uh, there are certain lines which you want to display, signature I didn't display, transposition is not important here, but tempo and beat make mapping are important. Movie of course, again Martin also explains how to load the movie and how to uh, lock it to, to the markers and all that. Uh, but, but these are, well arrangement is not so important, but, but these are the lines that are essential marker, movie, tempo and uh, if you use beat mapping, which I did here, then also beat mapping. They're called global tracks, I call them arrangement tracks, whatever. Basically we have two or three tempos, uh, starts out in 80 B with 80 BPM, goes into, slows down a little bit and then resumes and uh, speeds up a bit to 90 BPM and then when the action starts later on, we increase it to 128 BPM. But in between, as you can see, Logic uh, does something on it by itself because I used beat mapping. I wanted to have certain cues on the first bar, uh, on the first beat in the bar, which, you know, in order to match it with the music better. And uh, this is why Logic needs to speed up or slow down the tempo in order to make those uh, cuts in the right way. Okay. So let's take a real quick look at the first cue which is this um, dark foreboding, um, you know, scene in the woods and at twilight, you know, and you will see, see gray and dark in the background. So, okay, let's take a listen. So really minimal approach, um, just basically texture, lots of texture. I used uh, Orchestra Essentials 2 with uh, the flageolet for the violins. Flageolet is, you know, I think the technical term is concertino or colenio, which means that you hear the violinist not playing a regular note, but more like a like a harmonics kind of thing. Let's listen to that in isolation so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, a kind of a harmonics sound in a chord. Basically, it's just the same chord as the piano. I start out with this piano arpeggio. Slaps, soft piano. So it's a rising arpeggio and then falling arpeggio, coming down, back down, and also the tempo slows down a little bit. Uh, and I use the lab soft piano for that, which is a free package and sounds really great for situations like this where you want to have a melody but not too pronounced, not too much in the foreground. And basically, I just copied that uh, MIDI region to the string section and this is where this kind of blended in sound occurs from the violin and, and uh, celli and then also uh, deep strings from laps again I think yeah 
the labs uh, instrument or package and then actually BBC SO Discover which was one of my first libraries and I think um, it's still a you know it's phenomenally uh, diverse and, and, and powerful library it's it's basically free and uh, provides you with lots of um, basics like all the instrument sections and and so on and so I used um, the bass and uh, what is it else what else is it yeah deep basses and also orchestral essentials one okay next scene now we see something different which is uh, the tremolo strings, the rolls of the timpani. Okay, very minimal approach, just a little pounding uh, synth bass pattern, which is Heaviosity Foundations bass that I, that I used for this one. It's also free. And in isolation, sounds like that. So you have the arpeggiator here. With, you know, you get to draw in these. Um, so if you press one note, it plays a couple of, yeah, eight notes. And uh, of course, in Logic, there's uh, also a built-in arpeggiator, MIDI arpeggiator. If if you have a different bass sound and want to have the same effect, then you could use the MIDI arpeggiator built into Logic. But here, it's it's built into the uh, instrument. Then uh, the choir from Orchestral Essentials Two. I need to find the spots where the volume is up. I used heavy automation. Uh, for these parts here in order to fade in and fade out sounds uh, as I saw fit, which is why. So this is the ooh and swell articulation, both activated at the same time. I made a video about Orchestra Essentials 1 and one about uh, Orchestra Essentials 2, which I'm going to link in the description below to, you know, uh, go more deeply into the presets here but these articulations if you shift click them you get to play both at the same time they're in most cases by default mapped to the mod wheel for expression and uh, and volume and so on and so that's what that is but the idea being and i think this is important is that i meant to keep it kind of minimal i noticed in the other contenders and they were ex incredibly strong I mean, I was just flabbergasted by the quality of the of the other contenders. Um, they usually approached it uh, more like a trailer, epic trailer kind of thing, and I meant to go exactly as intentionally go against that. I wanted to avoid that by all means, and and also be very respectful of the uh, incredible job that Archie did with the sound effects. You know, he made all that by himself using just an inch, uh, a microphone and. and adding all the the foley which i thought was really creative and really great so shout out to archie really well done okay um what else we got let's move on here so the tempo is slightly increased here because now we see th something more specific we the, the beginning scene is kind of foreboding we you know it's dark it's in the woods later at night probably around winter or uh, you know early spring like it is now this interior car with the driver uh, watching the other person is something more specific, something better known. It's not. It's less less mysterious, I guess. It's more concrete, more specific. Something we're familiar with, and not necessarily all that uh, menacing so far. I mean, it looks kind of normal. The the driver is bored. Um, the lights are on. He's you know. Yeah, exhaling like, how long is this going to take? You know, adjust the, the rear mirror. Eventually kills the engine. Turns around, what's going on? How long is he still going to take here with the digging? 
can we please speed it up, you know, that sort of thing. So I'm kind of, you know, like annoyed and something we're all familiar with, not as menacing as, as the first scene. That's why I chose to not over orchestrate it with, uh, with lots of, uh, of instruments or textures here, just a little choir, because I always associate choir with Gregorian chants, you know, in church, and they always have me feel like slightly uncomfortable when I was younger. And so I chose the mirror because I thought they make for this kind of dark and foreboding um, uh, atmosphere and texture. And then the arpeggiated rhythm, and also um, I used soft knocker, can't find them now. Where are they? Well, something from um, Spitfire Audio again, which is called um, Originals um, Media Kit, and they have this kind of um, tapping sound along with uh, with the timpani rolls and and the arpeggiated rhythm. So here, I kind of set up the the mood, the atmosphere uh, with this kind of dark foreboding swell from the celli and the choir and then the action starts. Why action? Because now we see there's a third person, he's taken captive in, inside the car, tries to get their attention, wants to get out and now we can put one and one together, you know, and, and connect the dots and see that gentleman here, or not so gentle, is digging a hole, apparently for him to get buried in. So yeah, uh, he starts to fight for his life. I speed up the tempo. It's, uh, it goes to 128 BPM. Uh, the synth bass um, speeds up. Uh, the pattern increase, um, like beca becomes more intense. There's more going on. I used guitar, electric guitar, slightly distorted to uh, support the rhythm. Um, the, the soft knocker, this kind of percussive instrument, is uh, here. Like a fast heartbeat, heart beating, getting anxious and, and being in distress, distress and uh, you know, anticipating nothing good to happen. So the rhythmic element is important here for me. For me, that's, that's what I'm meant to support. Like this person is fighting for his life, pounding heart, pounding rhythm, supported by the guitar, but not too much in order to, to keep it simple. Choir denoting discomfort, my discomfort, <laughs> and something else which I need to mention, uh, which is I think a very underrated, fabulous library by Native Instruments. This one here, Ethereal Earth, uh, as part of the complete startup pack package, provides this wonderful synth path here that I'm using. Let's listen to that in isolation real quick, because I think it really sounds great. It has, it has all these nice controls here, like blend A, B between synth rain and white hole. Then there's like a wavetable function that you can automate actually, filtering, flux, space, reverb and all that. And so, so it makes for a really lively um, animated texture, but not sonically, musically, not too specific, not too chord oriented. That's what I intended to have here, sonic texture. So in isolation. And the tempo speeds up. And silence and that was important to me before the shot rings out I have complete silence I can't think of the word right now you know like something in his mouth to, to drown out uh, his screaming so that nobody gets alerted by that and so we hear his last attempt to to break free before he gets shot it's a trading echo from the other sounds and then the shot so the tempo goes down again because now it's completed person here apparently covers the hole, spits out, you know, a lot of labor behind them, and um, 
just some texture and rhythm. The texture again is orchestrally essential. No, it's actually Project Sam Free Orchestra this time, called Orchestral Drones, which are something like that in isolation. Very subtle. Just some kind of, you know, underlying sonic movement going on, something to denote the dark uh, atmosphere. And what else is there? Timpani? Yeah, the timpani we already heard. I think I also filtered them down so that they are really just very much into the background. A little bit of the timpani roll also filtered down. All together is this. <laughs> And the reason for choosing this sparse or sparse instrumentation uh, is to respect uh, Archie's work and uh, SFX uh, um, Foley soundtrack uh, because I remember Christian Henson not tiring to point out that dialogue is always king. You have to respect the dialogue. Now there's no dialogue here, but I thought the special effects and, and Foley track was so wonderfully done and matched the picture so well that I want to, wanted to be mindful and respectful of that and keep my instrumentation very low and sparse and minimalist. Last scene and I'm over and through with my babbling. You almost just a cymbal roll here, cymbal swell. back into the pounding rhythm like a reprise of the initial of the initial pattern which was also intentional um, to bring back some element which we already know instrumentation is uh, orchestra essentials one timpani rolls with uh, two articulations uh, a hit and tremolo and uh, where are we? So for every key press, you have the hit from the tremolo and a swell. And that kind of, again, uh, blend it uh, with each other and, you know, into this kind of atmospheric sonic texture. Okay, that was my bit for uh, Goodbye Brother. Again, thanks for all my uh, new subscribers and returning visitors. I, I totally I couldn't appreciate your support anymore. Uh, I see an enormous increase in watch time of my content. So I'm hoping that this is going to be helpful again. Please come back, subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, ding the bell to get not a thought about new content like this one. And uh, come back and uh, see you soon. Westbound for Westbound Music. Bye-bye. Over and out.